Welcome back to my garage. On this video, we're going to be talking about tools and tool holding. We're getting so close to running our first part. We've got the workpiece in the vise. Now we need to have something to cut it. There are a couple of different ways the tools fit into the spindle, which depends on your machine. BT30 is what I use in my 1100MX. It's an industry standard tapered tool holder with a pull stud. You may have a TTS, which stands for Tormach Tooling System. It's a cost-effective solution and does not have a pull stud. Whether you use BT30 or TTS, you will have several tool holding options within those. Here are four that I commonly use. Number one, solid tool holders. These are rigid, low-cost holders that work with only one tool size. They are made in nominal increments. I've got quarter inch, three-eighths inch, and half an inch. These tool holders require a weld-in flat to retain the tool. Next, we have ER tool holders. These are very versatile, good for finishing or light roughing operations. They work great for end mills and drills, and even sharpies. Having a bunch of these on hand is very useful. To hold your tool, you select a collet of that same size or slightly larger than your tool. Most collets have about a one millimeter clamping range, but the closer your collet is to the nominal size of your tool, the better the clamping force you'll have, which also means less runout in your tool as it spins. And the larger the collet size, the more rigid they are. Next, we have a drill chuck. This is a quick and easy solution for holding drill bits. These are not designed to work with end mills or with tools that will encounter side loads. Please, please do not put end mills into drill chucks. Finally, we have tool holders that are also the actual tool, like this face mill. We'll talk more about these in a minute. There are more tool holding options, but these will get you started. Now, let's discuss cutting tools. Before we get into specifics, just know there are a lot of variations when it comes to tooling. Cutting tools can be made out of different materials, they can be coated with different elements, they have different flute numbers, lengths of cut, they can have inserts that can be swapped out. It's a deep, deep rabbit hole. I won't go into all the different variations here, but just know it's easier to learn with a quality tool rather than the cheapest one you can get. It takes experience to determine the cause of any problems you may encounter. Putting good tools in the machine eliminates that variable and allows you to focus on other causes. You don't have to get the most expensive tooling right out of the gate, but I also wouldn't grab the cheapest tools off of Amazon. Okay, with that out of the way, let's first talk about end mills. These are the most common tools used in CNC milling. They can cut on the bottom end of the tool and on the side. You'll use these all the time. End mills come in a variety of sizes and shapes. They can have sharp corners or radius corners. The radius corner helps prolong tool life and is an easy way to add a fillet to the bottom of a wall. Next is the ball end mill. You can see the end is radius, hence the name ball. It's used for cutting 3D surfaces. Next is the drill bit. You have quite a few options for drill bits. Here are a couple options. You can get the typical drill bit you may have used in woodworking. That's called a jobber bit. I tend to use the machine length drill bit. They have a shorter overall length than jobber drill bits for maximum rigidity and accuracy, as well as reduced deflection and breakage. Next, you have tools that can cut threads in your part. You can use taps or you can use tools called thread mills. Taps operate similar to a drill bit with the difference being the spindle is synchronized with the Z motion. A properly sized hole must be drilled before using a tap. You'll need to know the proper tap drill size for your tap. Thread mills allow you to mill internal threads and external threads with the same tool. It can cut various sizes of threads and different thread pitches. And it can even deburr and backside chamfer a hole. I believe the most important advantage of a thread mill is that if it breaks, you load a new thread mill and continue cutting. If a tap breaks, you have to spend time removing the broken pieces and ultimately you may have to scrap your part. For facing a part or cutting the top surface, you can use tools like a face mill, shell mill, or fly cutter. This leads me to inserted tooling. Notice on this face mill, it has these interchangeable inserts. These can lower your operating cost because if they break, you only have to replace the inserts. You can also change the inserts depending on the kind of material you are cutting. Face mills are also cost effective for larger diameters as the cost of end mills can go up quickly over half an inch in diameter. That's just a brief overview of tooling and tool holding. Let's get to preparing your tools. For your first part, we'll keep it simple. Let's use a drill bit and an end mill. Select a three flute quarter inch end mill. That'll work great for aluminum. Next, you'll need a quarter inch collet. 
To install a tool into a collet, first snap the collet into the cap, then insert the tool and screw the cap into the tool holder. Then tighten it down. Next, take your 5 16 inch drill bit, insert it into the chuck, and tighten it down. Now, we must set the tool height. If we don't, the machine won't know where the tip of the drill bit and end mill are in relation to the spindle. There are a couple of different ways to do this. For TTS tool holders, you can measure using a granite block and height gauge and transfer the numbers to the machine. For BT30 tool holders, you can use the analog height gauge inside the machine. The other way to set tool height is to use the ETS, Electronic Tool Setter. It's another amazing tool like the probe that will save time in your setup. This is the option I will be using to set up my tools. Now before you move on, you'll need to refer to the documentation to set up and calibrate your Tormach electronic tool setter. With your ETS already set up, load your first tool, the end mill, into the spindle. Type in tool 1 in Pathpilot. Navigate to the tool offset tab. For tool 1 and 2, set Z to 0 by double clicking in the field and then typing 0 and enter. Click the Move and Set Tool Length button. The machine will now set the tool length automatically. This is such a time saver. Remove the end mill and do the same thing for the drill bit, calling that tool number two. The machine sets the tool length for the drill bit. Now go back to your tool offsets. You can see that your Z offset for both tool one and tool two are now set. Remember, mine will be different from yours. You can also name your tools in the Offsets tab. Okay, we have our tools ready. We'll pick it up on the next video.